What's going on y'all, Chuck Nutface here. And as you see on the table, I have got an interesting one right now. I've been looking forward to doing this review all week. I've had this for about a week, it'll be a week tomorrow. Um, I was intrigued by it. It was something that um, caught my attention that normally from a company that normally would not. As you can see right there, Boker, but not just Boker, Boker Plus. Boker, I have. it's a brand that I really have not looked at very long. They're an established brand. They're an old brand. Boker Tree brand is very well known for uh, their traditionals and their kind of old-timey knives and having a high-quality manufacturing out of Solingen, Germany. Um, but they've branched out over the years, um, you know, with Boker Plus, which is going to be uh, Chinese primarily, but also Asian, or not Asian, uh, European and American manufacturer. There's the Boker Magnum, which is the much uh, more budget conscious. I mean, this is the more budget conscious as well, generally speaking. Um, but the Magnum, which is going to be, you know, lower quality materials and everything else. And then there's there's a series of fixed blades under the Aborilioto or something like that, um, which is made out of, you know, primarily Italy and uh, I believe Argentina as well. So in any case, uh, feel free to chime in in the comments. Um, you know, if there's something that I missed or got incorrect, I am not a Boker historian. Also, while you're at it, if you want to go ahead and click that subscribe button right there, um, that really helps me out a lot if you haven't done so already. And uh, follow me on Instagram at Chuck underscore Nunface. Um, but yeah, kind of getting into it right now. This, uh, I really didn't even know this knife existed um, until just a couple of weeks ago. And I was just kind of going and looking at some pictures and everything else, and I came across this one. So this is, as I say, part of the Boker Plus. The last big Boker I had was probably in 2012, and it was a Boker Magnum, and it was not very good. It was a Sniper Blade Works collaboration, whatever it may have been. Um, it wasn't a very good knife. Um, and so I really just, I have not even really looked at this company lately, but this one kind of got my attention. So go ahead and get this opened up. And this here is the Boker Plus Collection 21, 2021 Epicenter, designed by Todd Rexford. So as you may know, Todd Rexford, custom knife maker, been around for several years, quite a, quite a number of years. His custom knives are exceedingly expensive, many, many thousands of dollars, generally speaking, um, especially if you're trying to find one on the secondary market, which is probably going to be the only place you really can get one, because I don't know how easy it is to get in his books, but I would imagine it's not very easy. This knife right here, so like I say, designed by Todd Rexford, um, limited to 500 pieces worldwide. This one is number 239 out of 500. It's got an M390 blade. And it's got, you know, obviously a titanium frame lock. Uh, it has a bolster. It's more of a faux bolster because as you see, it goes straight through. And then it's got the carbon fiber inlay and that really quite nice carbon fiber right there. Um, generally, I'm not the world's biggest carbon fiber fan, but, you know, this marble carbon fiber is or has been done really well. So it's got the certificate of authenticity in there. Nice pouch the box um let me just jump right in by saying that this is really good uh shockingly good surprisingly good excitingly good uh way beyond what my expectations were for the model and from boker in general um it's got a 3.46 inch blade so almost three and a half inches it weighs in at 4.69 ounces, so it's not too much of a featherweight, um, no internal milling or anything like that uh, on the knife itself or on the inside of the scales. Um, hardened steel lock bar insert, and it's also got lock bar stabilizer built into that as well. Um, Bowler M390 blade, like I say, designed by... Todd Rexford, single thumb stud, marble carbon fiber, cool pocket clip right there uh, with the ball bearing press fit in there, which I think is nice. These are made by Lion Steel out of Italy. 
Um, I don't have a whole lot of experience with lion steel either, um, other than I think the only lion steel I ever had was the Spider Co. Little Lion Spy, which is a collaboration between Spider Co. and Lion Steel. Um, I don't think I've had maybe one of the Ace or the Giant Mouse Ace Grand. Ace Biblia, one of those was made by Lion Steel. I think I had that come through uh, briefly. Um, got a nice little pivot collar right there, which is anodized bronze with that flat show side pivot. Um, two standoffs right there, also anodized bronze and the thumb stud anodized bronze as well. So we'll do a couple size comparisons here. Um, as always, there is the Spyderco PM2. Very similar in overall size, almost exact same overall size as the PM2. The PM2 might have a slightly longer blade, at least on paper, but they're basically going to be um, three and a half inch blades right there. And there is the X2D Spider Co. Native 5. The Ontario Rat 1, also very similar in size to the Ontario Rat 1, not too different at all. Uh, a little shorter overall. Let's do the um, the Medford Slim Midi in S90V, the DLT exclusive. Very similar, a little bit longer than the Slim Midi, um, but uh, but not too much of a difference there. And then, of course, we will go in and get the large Sabenza 21. Also pretty similar in size there as well not too different um thickness 0.15 for the blade stock thickness compared to chris reeve naz 0.125 so it's a little thicker a little thicker than that it's also going to carry a little bit thicker in the pocket let's see if i can get that to it's going to be a little bit thicker so it's about 0.53 or 0.54 in overall thickness so it's going to be thicker than maybe your average knife but i'm not mad at that at all it feels excellent in the hand it really does i'll kind of do the spider i'll do the spider co pm2 also while we're at it if we're going to do a thickness comparison basically the same as the pm2 am i wrong or am i wrong pretty close maybe a little thicker than the pm2 but not by much yeah, so it feels great in the hand. Ergonomically speaking, I can find no fault at all. It is just, it melts into the hand. It's that Rexford design, beautiful swell, and then cut away right there on the back for the, for the meat of the hand, for the palm there. Beautiful palm swell right here. That, that flared kick out at the butt right there at the end of the knife. I mean, it's just, it, it just feels great. No, the pocket clip, no hot spot whatsoever. The jimping, Actually, here is where the jimping kind of comes into the the um, the name of the knife, the epicenter. So it kind of looks like a like a shock wave going out. Um, looks really cool. Not super functional, um, but uh, you know, definitely doesn't get in the way either. So if you're not a fan of jimping on knives or want it to be minimal, that will not bother you one bit. Also, the uh, the numbering is right there as well. Two 2021 collection piece, number 239, and that's going to be out of 500. So they did, um, I believe it was uh, the designer for 2020 was Lucas Burnley. Don't know what uh, the 2022 will be, if they're even going to do one. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so it went Lucas Burnley and then Todd Rexford. This actually was a knife that came out about 10 years ago, the Epicenter. And I don't know a whole lot about it. It came out by Boker Plus as well. Um, and it was, it was an all TI knife, um, also designed by Todd Rexford called the epicenter, but it, apparently it, 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 it had a lot of flaws and it bombed pretty hard. Um, so from everything I can tell, this is going to be the, really the polar opposite from that one. Um, the faults I can find with this knife are nitpicky at best. This has just really exceeded a, any expectation that I had, but there are a few things that I may not necessarily love about it. Um, for one, the screws. I mean, I would prefer hidden hardware, something done on the inside there to keep that all one look. But I mean, I understand this is a production knife. It's not a custom knife. 
So, I mean, the, and, and there are plenty of custom makers even that, that will go ahead and put the screws uh, for the overlays or inlays or whatever it may be. Um, they'll be external and showing. I mean, it would be nice if they were on the inside of the knife, but, you know, the, it, it, it's not that bad. I mean, it's a production knife, so I'm not really complaining about that. Um, there, uh, the fitment of the overlay for the, or the insert for the carbon fiber is really good, but it's not perfect. There's a little bit of gapping right there. Um, a, it could be smoothed and contoured. I mean, you can feel it if you close your eyes and run over, or run over that gap right there. You can feel where the carbon fiber is a little bit higher compared to the, the, the TI bolster. Um, but really, once again, not bad. It's not quite fit perfectly. There's a little bit of gapping right there and it's a little bit, let's see, is it more prevalent on the back side or on the front side? There's just a little bit of gapping, um, you know, on the overlay right there for the carbon fiber, but nothing egregious, nothing that really takes away from it, you know, too much. Um, additionally, you've got this very flat pivot right here, which looks great with that, uh, with that pivot collar, the anodized bronze pivot collar. And then they went with a dome on this side. It would have just looked better if it was flat, um, kind of matching instead of going with that domed pivot right there. If they had just kept it flat on both sides, it would have looked a little better. But once again, really not that big a deal. I guess if you were looking for things to complain about, you could say if you're going to do hidden hardware, you would do hidden, hard, hidden hardware on the pivot too. But we also have to remember it is a production knife and it's not, you know, it's not a eight hundred thousand dollar night for anything like that so um you know they may not take as much time and detail into some of those things as you know i may want them to the glaring thing that if i could change one thing on this knife and just just change it right now and i may end up doing is the fact that it's only a single uh thumb stud so you can't middle finger flick this or anything like that it's just not going to happen it's only one way of deployment which is just with a thumb flick um it flicks out really well no complaints um, but it would be nice to have that other one. I think the reason being is because, you know, Boker is a European company and they have a large worldwide audience, but also, uh, you know, a lot of the European audience. And I know that when you look at this, it would be pretty easy to take this out. I mean, there's probably some Loctite or thread locker or something in there, but it doesn't look like it would be too challenging to take that out. It's not press fit in or anything. My thought is because, you know, with European knife laws, it has to be two hand opening. You can't have any sort of one hand opening knife. Um, and so you can make that so it can be easily removed. And so it would be compliant with a lot of European knife laws. Um, it may be something where if I'm putting in an order at TI connector, I want to get some bearings or something like that. Or if I want to get crazy and, you know, put double thumb lugs on a Sebenza or something like that, I may end up, uh, getting a dual thumb stud. I won't have the, the bronze anodized unless that's something I do myself, but, um, I may end up doing something like that just so it has it. So I wish it had the dual thumb studs, but like I say, they're not the first maker that hasn't done that. Shevrikov's another one that seems to like to just do single thumb stud. Um, it, it, it's not the end of the world, uh, but I would change that. But other than that, complaints, that's it. And they're nitpicky. The only big one is just, I wish it had two uh, dual thumb studs. Other than that, that's it. It is riding on bearings. Um, I have not taken this apart and seen what kind of bearings they are. I would imagine they're just your standard stainless steel, possibly ceramic bearings, but um, they are exceedingly smooth. You cannot feel any sort of vibration or rolling in the, uh, the body of the knife when you're dropping it, um, which, you know, it's not that surprising to be able to feel that. It's very smooth. It's got an almost shirogorov like action to it. And I don't say that lightly, and I really should have grabbed a Shiro before I uh, started this video. But, um, I mean, just look at that. You really don't have to do much. It's got the type of closing action on bearings that I like. It is controlled. Not guillotine. It falls shut, but it falls shut in a very hydraulic, smooth, controlled fashion. I really like that. It's got an action on a bearing knife that I have seen in knives that cost a lot more than this one. Um, and so I really like that a lot. Um, it does have a ceramic ball detent. 
if you can see that in there. Nice lockup on this one right here, probably about 30% on the lockup. The thing I did notice too, so I don't know if this is by design, but it looks almost like a, a rough cut on the tang, almost like the tang itself has been carbonized. I know it hasn't been, but it hasn't been smoothed out either. And I wondered that if that aids with lock slip or to prevent lock slip, that is. Um, I couldn't say for sure, but it is more of a rough cut right there. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I just know that I haven't had any problems with it. There is no, and I haven't made any adjustments on this knife. I haven't tightened the pivot. I haven't done anything to it since I've had it. Um, it doesn't need any sort of adjustments, but a lot of times you'll have to do things like, you know, check for lock rock. There's no, it is bank fault solid when the block is engaged and when I take the pressure off the lock, there's also no side to side play whatsoever. So it is good to go. Um, it's excellent. So let's see. I don't know if there's anything else I can really say about this other than the fact that I am pleasantly surprised. It's a Boker Plus made in Italy by Lion Steel Knives designed by Todd Rexford. Uh, it, it just impresses. I am very satisfied with this knife. I, was, I, I didn't know this knife even existed until a few weeks ago. And now that I've had it for about a week now, I've carried it. If you checked out my Instagram, I actually carried this knife more than, uh, than I posted on Instagram because I don't like to post the same knife, you know, four or five days in a row. But I, I had this knife in my pocket pretty much every day last week. Been using it. It's great. Um, really happy with it. Uh, can't say enough nice, nice things about this knife. Um, and really, I think I'm just going to wrap it up with that. Uh, I will just ask one more time if you can go ahead and click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Go ahead and leave me a comment. Uh, share the video. I'd definitely appreciate that to kind of help get that comment out there, uh, that co my content out there. If you leave me a comment, let me know what you think of this knife. If you've had any experience with, with Boker, good or bad. Um, I know that, that oftentimes, you know, what, what I've been hearing, especially on Instagram is their quality control is hit or miss, but I can say with hundred percent confidence that the quality control on this particular knife, uh, has been fantastic. Um, you know, I'd love to own a Todd Rexford custom, but this is not a bad facsimile. So, um, give me a follow on Instagram at Chuck underscore Nunface, and, uh, thanks for checking it out. Let me know what you think.